We are live. Hey, hey, we're live. What's up? Hey, guys, welcome. This is the Real Estate Investing Mastery Podcast. So glad you're here. Welcome. I got a special guest today. If you can tell, his name is Sean Terry. He's in the house. I'm so glad he's here. Sean and I go way back. I got, I'll tell you about our story here in just a minute. Um, I'm glad to have him on the show. I'm excited that he's here. And uh, just a few quick housekeeping things here, okay, guys? Um, this podcast is broadcasting right now live on the interwebs, on Facebook, Periscope, and YouTube. If you're watching us live right now, leave a comment in the, uh, in the comments area. Let us know where you're from. Say hello. Tell us where you're from. Say hi to Sean. As we go through this podcast, I want you guys to ask questions. So if you've got any questions you want to ask Sean, this is the place to do it right now. We're also going to be recording this and releasing it later as a real podcast, an audio podcast in a few weeks. But this is your opportunity to actually say hi to Sean and ask him any questions that you might have. Is that cool or what? Yes, it is. So uh, the second thing is if you like this show, go to iTunes, subscribe, leave a review. Uh, I am happy to say I have more reviews than Sean finally on my podcast <laughs> Real Estate Investing Mastery Podcast. Sean's podcast is at Flip to Freedom. Uh, he's been doing it longer than I have, but I finally surpassed him in, in reviews. I think I do. I'm, I might not. I might. Have, he might have passed me up. I think, probably, that, I think it's that little tuft that you have down here. That I think <laughs> that, you know, it's, it's got to be that little thing right there. So if I, I, I got to grow it. If you grow one like this, you'll get more reviews on your podcast. All right, all right, that's the secret. Okay. I, I, knew, there, I knew there was something. <laughs> and uh, so here's the other thing, guys. Leave a review on the show if you like the show. And, and, and go subscribe to Sean Terry's podcast, Flip to Freedom. Flip the number two freedom. Uh, he's been doing it forever. And uh, one of the ways when we first met, I heard his podcast. And um, he called me up. I called him on his cell phone. Don't ever do that. <laughs> no, I left my cell phone number. On the podcast, yeah. hey, give me a call. Here's my number. I I called him up and I said, what's going on? And we talked for like an hour or two hours or something and um, just became friends. And uh, he gave me some great advice. Sean, I remember you told me to, uh, I should name my podcast Real Estate Investing Wizards. Because at the time you were, you had, one of your books was uh, The Stock Market Wizards. Do you remember right. that? Yeah, I totally and he gave me, Sean was the guy before everybody else and their grandmother was interviewing people. Hardly anybody was doing that in podcasting. Yeah. Sean gave me the idea, you should interview other successful real estate investors. And I thought, that's a great idea. So I said, <laughs> I don't want to call it wizards. I call it real estate investing masters. And yeah. I thought, well, master, you'd be better. Um, so and then, and then uh, I, I bugged, I was bugging Sean, like, Hey, how do I do this? How do I set it up? And Libsyn, what is that? And he was telling me what mics to buy and how to set it up. And in, in um, Google feed burner, I think is what we were using at the time. Yeah. Feed burner. Yeah. So anyway, I'm glad you're here. Oh, one more thing, Sean, real quick. Y'all just wrote a new book. Look at Ooh, this baby. Look at Ooh, that. Yeah. Love and you it. know, you know where this picture's from, Sean? Extreme freedom. Yes, when I was speaking at your event a few years ago. Look how stuffy um, you look. Oh, I look like a good looking dude there. Looking I dude. asked him to I asked him to add a little tan color on my face. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. I was actually I'm always that tan. But uh, I get, just wrote a new book, guys, called REI Secrets. Um, okay. and it's 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 gonna be coming out daily. Um, it's it's gonna be coming out in a few in a week or two. Um, yep. daily nuggets of real estate investing wisdom to help you get more leads, close more deals. Each chapter is like two or three pages long. It kind of reads like a devotional that you can actually just read one chapter a day to get some inspiration and ideas and motivation to actually get out there and start making some deals, doing some deals. All right. Okay. So go to reisecrets.com if you're interested in that. Cool. Cool. Hey, hey, look at this. John Smith, two of my favorite mentors. All right. <laughs> Perfect. Spencer from the Facebooks. Absolute legends. Love you guys. <laughs> Been around. We're getting old, dude. Yeah. Look at, your tough is now turning gray. <laughs> well, I don't color my hair up here, though, man. <laughs> Jeff Henley on the Periscopes. Jeff Henley from Asheville. What's up? He says, hi, Sean. It's kind of cool. You can connect this to. Oh, yeah. this is amazing. We've got um, Margie here. Hi, Joe and Sean. I watch Flip to Freedom. Good info. Boom. Thank you very much. Margie. Nice. All right. So guys, this is, uh, I'm, I'm really glad and honored to have you here, Sean. Um, you 
I don't know if there's any many other people um, in the in in the industry that have impacted more people's lives and businesses than you. And uh, I, I wanted to get you on the podcast to talk about kind of what's going on in the market now. What are you seeing working? Um, mm -hmm. And you're also got a, a really good event coming up. And before we get too long, I just want to give you guys the link to that. Extreme Freedom Live is coming up. Go to extremefreedomlive.com. And it's in a couple, three weeks from now. What are the dates again, Sean? October 25th through this 27th here in Phoenix, Arizona. So if you're anywhere around, make sure yes. you get to go. Um, if you go to Extreme Freedom Live and if you use the coupon code EXTREME, um, I, we only have like a handful of tickets left. You can get a 30% discount off on the remaining seats. Now, it's, it's almost like a concert style. You get to select your own seat. It's not open oh, seat. Cool. So you get to select your own seat. So uh, select one of the seats. Use Extreme 30% off. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Okay. So um, let me see here. The uh, Sean, you've uh, been doing some really, really cool things. A lot of people already know your story, how you got started in real estate. You were in the Marines. Uh, yeah. one, of, one of my favorite stories you tell is a, a guy named, a friend of yours named Joe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just wondering if you could just retell that story real quickly here, uh, get some people to kind of know who you are a little bit mm -hmm. and also why you're so passionate about this business and, and life in general. Will you talk about Joe for just a minute? <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Um, it's sad, it's a sad story, but I, um, spent, you know, I spent four years in the Marine Corps. I joined in, uh, 1988. I was 18 years old from Vermont of all places. And I wanted to get out of Vermont because Vermont was, you know, this small town. I wanted to go see the world. I felt trapped there. So joined the Marine Corps. And the only reason I picked the Marine Corps because they have the coolest uniforms. Uh oh, I think we lost Sean. Hold on here. You guys still with us? Sean, Sean. Ah. So on my screen, Sean is frozen, but I'm still live on Facebook. Sean, Sean, Sean. All right. So Sean will be back here in just a minute. Let me uh, figure out what to do. I don't know what to do. He'll be back. Um, so let me just, while, while he's going here, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll edit this out. Um, I'm still live. Use that link to come back. Uh, let me just let me just say this real quick as he gets back on here. Uh, this event, Extreme Freedom Live, is is unlike any other event out there right now in the real estate investing space. Um, Sean is bringing up some really really high caliber people that are going to be talking about what they're doing in their business, um, how they're wholesaling deals, multiple deals in multiple markets all around the country. And um, it's going to be phenomenal. You really need to come to that if you can. And again, the link for it is extremefreedomlive.com, extremefreedomlive.com. Hopefully this link that I sent him is working. He should be getting back on here. Oh, uh, there he is. There he is. Yes. I don't know what happened there, bud. All right. Hey. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know either. I don't know. It just, you, it just like froze up and I lost everything. I don't know if it was our internet or whatever, but who knows? Anyways, back to the story. I was in the Marine Corps, got on the bus, got in. Uh, now I went and I took off and I'm off to boot camp, did the whole thing there. And then um, it was about... It was 1991, 1992. Um, we, I was 21 years old. I was on ship um, in the Middle East. And uh, it was, I remember it was January 14th was my birthday. January 14th, 1970 is my birthday. But January 14th, 1991, President uh, Bush Sr. got on the airwaves just to the military and said that we are going to announce we're essentially going mm. to war. Um, and I remember felt a ripple effect. The whole place was all quiet. And 
the Marine Corps, is, it's like a band of brothers, right? You have uh, all these guys you hang out with. I remember I was hanging out with a, my roommate was Grant. He was from Atlanta, a great guy. Another guy, McCollum from, he's from, uh, you know, from, um, from Alabama, another, couple of, another guy from Miami, another guy. So we're all, we're all like from all over the planet and we're all hanging out and we all, you know, we sleep, you know, in, you know, in pod pods, take showers together. We're all hanging out. We party together. So you get really close uh, with this group of guys. One guy, his name was Joe um, and he's from Iowa and he had, he was this like prototypical um, Iowan boy at his like, you know, rosy cheeks and stuff. He was young, young kid. But anyways, so uh, we were all real close, and I remember we were on ship, um, and we're about to go into Bahrain, where we we're going to port, and then get off, um, and then go on a caravan into uh, into Kuwait, where essentially there was combat that was happening there. So, um, and we had to uh, fight off the uh, Republican Guard, which is essentially the Iraqi army that we were going to basically go into combat with. Right. So, um, we didn't know what to expect. We didn't know really what was going on. We just knew that, you know, Hey, listen, we're going to war now. So we got on, uh, we were on the U S um, S new Orleans at the time. And it's a U.S. New Orleans is a helo carrier. Um, and we're sitting on the top of the deck, you know, with these helos and the deck's pretty big and we're up there with our, um, our commander, and he was speaking to everybody. So we're all up there. And at the time, we're about to um, basically uh, get on the uh, helicopters. They're going to take us, um, or I think we're, we're, we're ported. They're going to take us uh, into Bahrain. And then we're going to uh, uh, basically get on the convoys there. So at the time, I mean, I, ha I had all my, 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 my flak in for, in, you know, on. I had, we had uh, all of our weaponry, my M16A2. Um, all of our ammunition had every, and we were just completely ready to go. And I'm sitting there looking at all my buddies and I remember thinking, holy cow, man, we're drinking with these guys. And, you know, he's got, you know, grenades and, you know, we're locked in, you know, had all of our, you know, M16, A2s and he's got a saw weapon over his shoulder and stuff. And we're like, we're going into war. I mean, this is pretty insane, you know? And I was at the time, I just turned 21 years old. I was like, this is, this is crazy. I'm turning 21 and I'm actually going to war. Um, so what happened was, is I remember the, uh, commander in chief there was, uh, talking to all of us, um, uh, on the ship over kind of like a loudspeaker, basically saying, listen, you know, we're going to war, you know, we don't really know what to expect, but the bottom line is you have a choice. You can die a hero or you can die in nobody. But the bottom line is there's a good chance you're not coming back. So you can have a choice. You can die a hero or you can die a nobody. This choice is yours. And I remember thinking at the time, and as a Marine, you're going, I'm going to die a hero, right? It's all pumped up. We're like, come on. We're it's like, let's go. We're chomping at the bit to just get to, to get in there, right? So we go off. We go to a caravan. I remember where, you know, as we're driving, you know, through the desert in Kuwait, they had that, like, the smoke was coming up from the oil wells, and it was literally a black around my lips and around my eyes. Actually, I actually didn't show you a picture of it. It's crazy. Um, but the bottom line is, uh, we came to this, uh, this airfield, um, that we had to, uh, secure. And I remember walking this airfield, this is an old Kuwaiti airfield, the Republican guard j literally just left. Um, and as we went in there, you could see human feces of this Republican guard that was in there. We basically had to create a perimeter and secure, uh, this, um, this, uh, this area around this area. So, uh, so we did that, had everything all set up, and uh, basically we slept for the night, woke up in the morning early, you know, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning, and we had these little, for food, we had these things called MREs, meals ready to eat, right? And, uh, and we were sitting out there, uh, you know, eating our MREs, which you literally, it's you take fruit and you put it in water and it expands and it's disgusting, right? And everybody wants the hot sauce to cover up the eggs because the eggs are terrible. So anyways, we're sitting there outside. Right. And in these in this like airfield that was just taken, you know, kind of taken over by these Republican guards, there were signs of their stuff everywhere. We're sitting out, we're talking. Um, and then there's uh, Joe, we're, we're talking in the morning and stuff, and he's telling about his girlfriend in Hawaii that he's so excited to go back and see, and they're going to get married, and they can't wait to have a family, and his, he's, like, he's like all in love, and he had this picture he would carry around of his girlfriend from Hawaii, and so excited to go back and, and hang out with her, right? So what happens was he gets up 
Um, and he is going to go to the bathroom, but he goes out and he kind of goes over this, you know, walks out and there's really, there's no restrooms. There's no, you know, porta potties or anything like that. So he's literally going up and he's going over this, you know, mound of, um, you know, sand, you know, just like a sand dune or whatever. And he steps over and he gets on the other side of it, kind of goes out of sight and we hear a boom, right? And it's loud. And it's like, what the heck? We hit the deck because we're like, what? We think we're under attack or something. Next thing you know, we find out that um, Joe has literally um, been blown to smithereens because he stepped on a, uh, essentially a landmine or stuff, stepped on something that was that was buried there, blew him, blew him up. Um, and uh, and it, we all were absolutely in shock. We, you know, that was the kind of first time we've ever experienced from being a civilian life to going through the Marine Corps boot camp to getting on a ship to actually now we're in a combat situation where now we have uh, a casualty um, and we're, we're freaking out. And I, 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 you know, part of the story about it is, is, is that uh, I remember my daughter, um, you know, uh, saying recently, probably about a year or so ago, actually, I mean, I mean, she's been singing like crazy doing amazing things now, but about a year or so ago, she's saying at the Diamondbacks game with uh, in front of 55,000 people, the New York Yankees and the, and the Diamondbacks, it was nationally televised. We had a huge suite. We had tons of people there. And I was freaking out, man. She, she gets up to the, you know, up to the plate. She has her earbuds in because the echo is just amazing. And she's, uh, you know, 14 years old at the time. And she steps up uh, to the home plate, 55,000 people all standing. And they go, and to sing the national anthem, anthem, anthem is Ava Terry. You know, and she's singing. She gets up there and she belts out the national anthem like you've never seen. She crushed it. She was amazing. Literally, and I'm sitting there shaking, holding that, you know, holding that kind of camera and stuff. And, and she's amazing. And she turns around and she literally runs to me and gives me this huge hug. And she's like, oh my gosh, I want to do that again. And I'm like, man, this kid's crazy, man. It's like, I can't, you know, she's like, she has like, the confidence of, of that and just she just when she's in her element she's amazing but i you know i look back at that situation i look back you know joe you know uh died you know for our freedom for us to have the ability to do wholesaling lease options or wholesaling houses or have a business you know and and he'll never experience having married his, you know, Hawaiian girlfriend, you know, potential wife and having a daughter of his own, you know, do something that amazing and turn around and hugging you in a situation like that, you know, and I think back and I'm like, wow, it's just like, you know, you know, look at all the people that have joined the military and sacrificed their lives, you know, so we could have the opportunity of success and freedom and live a lifestyle. We take it for advantage. advantage. And then we look at, and then we make excuses and we complain about what we don't have or what is going wrong or what's not going right. Instead of looking at the opportunity and saying, hey, I live in America, it's the greatest country in the world. I'm, 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 I have the ability now to go out and, and look at an incredible business, which wholesaling is the best business in the world. It's amazing. So you're in the best country in the world. You're in wholesaling in the best industry, real estate mm -hmm. in the world, where now you can go out and you can turn around and build a life of whatever you want. Guess what? You, if you want to turn around, we're, we're, in the, we're in escrow right now buying a 356 unit apartment complex that's, you know, $11 million purchase will pr produce three to four hundred thousand dollar years cash flow for partners and that's, that'll put me up about seven close to seven eight hundred units right so now look at that right there where can you go I don't have college education I used to spend all my time in the Marine Corps right where can I go is non-college education learn how to wholesale houses broke when I got started 580 credit score living month to month and I can flip a house I can make eleven thousand dollars right it gave me the hope the proof of concept and then parlay it into something that could be worth, you know, a hundred million. I mean, it's, it's amazing of what this opportunity is. And, uh, and people always tend to look at what they don't have or what's not working for them or what someone else is doing better, how they are, you know, competing against everybody else instead of looking at being grateful for what they have, grateful for the opportunity, grateful that they live in this great country and grateful that they can go out and do whatever they want to accomplish. So, man, I, I just love that story. I get goosebumps every time you tell it because it really puts things in perspective. It you does. Know? Yeah. We need to stop complaining and belly aching 
you know, we have so many things to be grateful for. Um, yeah, it's, it's such a good story. And it just reminds me. Of I, I, I mean, I think, you know, gratitude and I know you are very much like this, Joe, because I know you personally. I know who you are. I know you are as a person. But I think um, having gratitude in your life um, on a daily basis in a ritual format where you're doing it first thing in the morning, I think is absolutely critical because gratitude opens doors, right? Complaining doesn't. You know, so if you if you look at everything that's going great in your life, everything that's awesome, and you focus on that, guess what? You will have more of that. More great things will come in your life, and the and it's the whole saying is the better it gets, the better it gets. And but then if you complain and you look at what you don't have and look at what sucks, then if that saying happens too. When it rains, it pours. Oh, right. Yeah. So guess what? We have that decision to make every single day. We wake up every single morning and we can wake up and we can complain and look at what's bad and look how the world sucks and people are crazy and blah, 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 blah. Or we can look at what we're grateful for. And I guarantee more than anything else, any tactic we can give you, any strategy we can give you, that one thing alone will make a massive impact, especially if you do it every single day for 90 days straight, you will be a different person and you'll have different circumstances and events, experiences in your life. Man, an attitude of gratitude. That's the key to success. I, I don't know if there's anything else we need to talk about, <laughs> yeah. to be honest, because once you, the, Lewis, the Cardinals. Well, I, I've got some people here sharing some comments <laughs> talking about the Cardinals because they're playing the Atlanta Braves in the playoffs here. Um, but, you know, like that's that's all that matters. Really, just um, having that right attitude. I mean, I always say this too, that the best investment that you'll ever, the best real estate you'll ever invest in are the four inches here between your ears, right? Right. Uh, investing in yourself and your mind because, um, you know, I've been spending more and more time thinking, Sean, um, yeah. less time when I'm driving with the radio or podcasting or whatever. I mean, I listen to a lot of audio books and podcasts, but I've been spending more time intentionally um, just thinking not listening to music, not listening to podcasts or whatever, and spending more time doing that. And I've been finding that, um, you know, it's like, I think it was Abraham Lincoln that said, you know, give me eight hours to cut a tree down and I'll spend seven hours sharpening the saw Correct. and then one hour doing it. And I think we all need to spend more time doing that. I see so many people that know what they need to do, but don't do it. They have some kind of mental roadblock and um, starts, I think, I think it starts with without a doubt, um, being grateful, being grateful for what we have. Right. You know, it's interesting. I heard, uh, we were at church on, uh, one Sunday and a pastor was talking about, it. he asked a question that was uh, pretty impactful. He said, Hey, listen, how would you define your inner world, right? Your inner world. How would you define it? Would you define it a, uh, raging ocean, a babbling brook or a placid pond? Mm. Right. So how would you define it? Are you total chaos and turmoil inside? And it's like, you know, it's all the same anxiety of all this, like a turmoil, like a great, like a raging ocean or like a babbling brook where you're just constantly just going, or are you just a placid lake inside? Right. And what creates that groundedness, that calmness, that poise is part of it is having a morning ritual spending time alone, being quiet, and then listening, right? And listening to that internal voice and listening to that guidance and, and being quiet and meditating and say, and that will create, you'll turn you from a babbling brook in a, into oh, yeah. a placid ocean. But here's the thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something that's absolutely true, and this is truth and what I know, is that you cannot be a raging ocean or a babbling brook and achieve the success that you want in your life. Wow. You can't do it. It's, it will repel everything you're trying to accomplish. You can put all the energy and all the effort, but if you're a raging ocean, you're internally anxiety and worry and all stuff and it just worry, all this type of stuff, you're just repelling everything your your action, your outside actions are trying to accomplish. That's deep. That's really deep. <laughs> <It's> pretty deep. <laughs> well, I don't know where to go from here. We'll talk about KPIs. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about marketing. Marketing here. Agree. Jake is saying, what's up? He's watching from Orlando, Florida. Orlando. Yes. Harold saying, Sean, I truly agree. Nick, awesome. thank you for sharing your, you too. Awesome. Um, of course. Yes. Go Cardinals. 
<laughs> uh, we have somebody else here who uh, I don't know, Philip. Come on now, no, just you can just go and get off the podcast. I'm just. Kidding. <laughs> but uh, we've got um, Jake says here. I'm on my way to a local RIA right now, listening to Two Legends. Nice. Awesome, Jake. Uh, so have fun at the RIA. Yes, again, just if you're just joining us right now, um, Sean's got an event coming up at the end of this month, in the end of October. Go to extremefreedomlive.com to register for that. I think you just have 100 tickets left or something. Yeah, we just even last night, there's just a handful of tickets left right okay. now. Um, so you can go, we have signed, signed seating, you can go check it out. Use the coupon code extreme, extreme. Uh, to get 30% off of the remaining seats left. Good. I'm going to ask you guys, I'm going to ask you some questions, Sean, here, but I just want to let you guys know, again, if you're watching this live right now, type in your questions. If you got any questions you want to ask Sean um, about wholesaling, about what's working now with marketing and KPIs, um, this is the place and time to do it. So type in your questions into the comments on Facebook and YouTube, and we'll get to him. Cool. Um, so Sean, you've got Extreme Freedom coming up. Why did you decide to do another event? It's been about a year or two, I think, since you did your last one, a couple of years, right? Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to do a new one? Well, um, this would this is our seventh event. And is I've it really? One, yeah, oh, I've done one every single year for the last seven years, but except last year, two thousand eighteen okay. was the year that I I didn't I did not hold an extreme freedom event because two thousand seventeen um, was a rough year when it came to the event. Literally, I found out uh, about three weeks prior to the event. Oh, I remember this. Um, yeah, I know. Prior to the event, I think you were there. Prior to the event, that um, they changed venues on us three weeks before the event, meaning they put us in a complete different room that did not work. So we literally had to move hotels three weeks, and it was an absolute scramble. Um, the event turned out great, but literally we lost probably half the attendees in the whole mix-up, and it was very difficult to do. Um, so I just said, you know what? And it was a lot of stress on my team to be able to do it and everything. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to take a year off. Last year was that year off. This year we're back in it. I love doing events because number one, I love meeting people. I love delivering amazing information. Um, and I love hearing the impact. I mean, there's people today that if I said who they were and the names of who they were, you'd say they've attended previous events that I put on in the past. And that has been the dot in their life yeah. that chain made the massive impact in their career and life. So it's great to be able to do that. So there guys, listen, there's people that are making four or $500,000 a month that started from Sean Terry's events. It's mm -hmm. insane. The people, the caliber, I, I love the events because you get to network with a lot of cool people. Yeah. Right. Um, you pick up a lot of good tidbits and things like what's working for you. What's what, you know, what, what resources are you using for this? And uh, just the networking involved is is phenomenal. You have uh, talk about some of the. What, is there a theme for the event that you're doing this year? What is the well, that's that's kind of order agenda? Essentially, the theme. I mean, we we always cover the what's called the four phases of freedom. Mm -hmm. So the four phases of freedom is essentially uh, phase one is the process of getting your first check, um, and those are for people that basically come in they haven't got their first check. So if I usually ask the crowd. How many people haven't got your first check? A good 25 to 30% of the room have not got their first check. Mm -hmm. So we have people kind of stand up and tell their first check stories. It creates belief in people. But then we, we, we talk about what is working right now to get someone from no check to a check hyper fast, right? Of the, the, the best strategies, the best marketing techniques, the best way to talk and close sellers, the best way to get contracts. That is all done phase one. That's typically done the first half of the day. So usually the first half of the day one, people are going, oh my gosh, I got more than my money's worth. That's amazing. We actually do breakthrough stuff too, um, which which uh, is, is kind of, we're, we're kind of holding that, holding that back, but it's really a breakthrough where people will break through barriers of internal barriers, especially when it comes to talking to sellers and making offers. So phase two is where you um, accumulate one year's worth of income. We call it the escape plan. So now what happens is you're in a job and you want to go full time. What does that transition look like? How do you make that happen? How do you prioritize your time? What tools can you use? And then phase three is when now you take the option, you quit your job and you trans transition from an employee to, a, to an essential, to an entrepreneur. So now you have to manage your time different. It's different when 
I know you maybe you remember the day, Joe, the, the day you quit your job and you went full time as an entrepreneur. That's scary. You don't have oh, a guaranteed yeah. paycheck. You don't have your insurance covered. You know, if you don't make a check, you don't eat. Right. You know what I mean? So there is that transition. So how can you effectively and efficiently um, create repetitive and consistent income that's predictable? Right. That's all phase three. Phase four is where now you're scaling it to $100,000 a month. So that's when we're now going to reinvest 15 to 25% back in the marketing. We're going to hire a team of people. We're going to have an organizational chart, a blueprint of who we're going to hire, what the roles and responsibilities are, how do we pay them, what's the payroll structure, and what do they report on for KPIs. Then we're going to have meetings, we're going to have a scorecard, and it's all laid out. And you get all the tools, everything we talk about and the tools all along with it. Uh, through the whole process. So now once you get to that point, then you're going to have what's called, which we call cash stick. Cash flow is cash money that goes in and out. Cash stick is where you have excess money. So if your overhead is $10,000 a month, but you make 50,000 a month, you got 40,000 cash stick. What do you do with that cash stick to create additional income? You reinvest that in what I believe is through uh, apartment syndication. So now we're going to syndicate apartments. Um, we have Corey Peterson that's going to talk about that process of syndicating. Great guy. Great yeah, guy. great guy. So now think about this. What if your ultimate goal was to make $250,000 a year passive? Right. See, what happens is people look at wholesaling or wholesaling lease options as a end-all, be-all. That's not the end-all, be-all. That is just a means to get you enough cash to keep your lifestyle the same, enough cash to pour it into – uh, cash flow assets. So guess what? Maybe your maybe your numbers two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, and you want to make two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year passive. Well, you can do that through apartment syndication. So you own that two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year passive. Imagine that, right? So now you don't have to wake up, and you don't you're not working. You don't have to get a deal to make money. So what would you do with your time? Spend more time with your kids. Take more vacations. Travel the world, and that's money coming in. And the cool thing is, is because you have apartment syndication. You're getting depreciation, so you can write off the income, which is even better. So now you're not paying taxes, you know. So, um, so that's the whole process, and then we couple it and pretty much wrap the entire thing around what's called the law of attraction. I mean, not the law of attraction, but we call it the triangle effect. So the triangle effect essentially is your mental, spiritual, right, uh, and tied in with the law of attraction. How does that all you as a person? Um, uh, tie in to all these four phases. Meaning I've seen people and talk to people all the time. They're in the same market, sending the same postcard to the same list. And one investor gets all the leads and deals and the other investor is going, why can't I get anything? What's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong? I'm doing everything. And they blame the marketing, even though the marketing is the same. So there has to be something different, right? What's different. And that difference is what we call the triangle effect. And, uh, and once you understand that, and once you understand how that all ties to spiritual laws, um, mental uh, and our mental chronic thoughts tied with law of attraction, we put that all together, then it's going to make that whole four phases of freedom tie in, and it's going to you're start going to pulling your goals toward you versus chasing your goals. Yeah, I love that. Uh, the three, I'm looking at your website right now, extremefreedomlive.com. Um, the... The the is this going to be is it a three day event? Yeah it, yeah we have a we have a VIP day that yeah. is a one day mastermind and we're going to Top Golf on Friday night with the whole VIP group and we're going to have some fun. Love it love it. Yeah and then we got the, a con uh, we got a concert on Saturday night. So oh we yeah. Have open to open to everybody. It's going to be an awesome concert. Um, we're going to have bars and food and stuff like that. It's going to be awesome. Dance a little dance stuff and we got we hired a band that's going to come. Actually, it's Chelsea's band. Chelsea has one of the best bands in Phoenix. And really? yep, yep. She's uh they're gonna put on a kicking concert. Yep. Wow. How about that? Yep. I'm looking at the agenda here. It's crazy. You've got uh you're speaking, yep. Dean Graziosi speaking, yep. super motivational. Corey Peterson, he's gonna talk about um apartments, syndication, yep. right? Yeah. And by the way, just talk real briefly about apartments because that, that intimidates a lot of people, Sean. They're like, ah, oh, how do I even get started with that? What's your quick advice to somebody who's interested in doing what you're talking about but has no clue where to even start? Well, first off, I would I would um, look into Corey Peterson. There's two people I would highly recommend. Um, Corey Peterson, obviously, he's amazing. 
Um, he uh, wrote a book on, on specifically cash flow that would I would definitely download or recommend or, or get or buy however you got to get it. I think it's on uh, Amazon. You can get it. So Corey Peterson, and he talks about the process of raising capital. So I believe, in my opinion, the highest evolution of a real estate investor is uh, the ability to raise capital, right? So if we're going to talk about a market shift, we might talk about it. I know if we're going to talk about it, but if we're going to talk about a market shift, you know, generational wealth is made through market shifts. The previous market shift, I wasn't smart enough in understanding a market shift and I got hurt, right? I don't know if you did, but I know I did. Oh yeah. But now I know what I know and I studied what I've studied and learned what I've learned that to make sure it never happens again is that, and also understanding people made fortunes during the last correction and there's people that I got hurt, maybe you got hurt, right, during that time. Oh. And but there are people that made fortunes that made they were buying houses, thousands of them for twenty thousand dollars a piece that are now worth two hundred and eighty thousand dollars a piece. That's those are generational fortunes that are made. So if the highest evolution is raising capital, learning to be able to raise capital now when we're in a good market, right? That when the market does correct, because it will correct, who knows when? It could be 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, who knows? The bottom line is, is that when it does correct and you have the ability in the relationships with people to raise capital, now you can turn around the apartment buildings or real estate that you're buying, now you can buy it at 50 cents on the dollar. So that's number one. Number one, having the ability to raise capital, I think, is, is a huge yeah. Skill uh, that must be learned and applied. Number one. Number two is that when it comes to apartment, apartment syndication, is that um, it's 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 a lot of people doing a little bit. So in, in a deal we're doing right now, three hundred fifty-six units, eleven point two million dollars. We have a seven million dollar loan. We're raising about three and a half million. So basically, we need thirty-five investors for a hundred thousand dollars. Well, if I looked at the stock market this afternoon, I mean, I think I can't. I don't see. I can't see what it closed at. But it closed at 494 points down. It was over 300 points yesterday. That's over seven, almost 800 points in a matter of 24 to 48 hours, right? So that's going down. So if someone has their money in the stock market, they are probably want to put some, put it in someplace else. They have money in a 401k or, or if they have money in a, a Roth IRA, they're going to want to put it somewhere else, right? Yeah, so yeah. what is the alternate? Real estate. Real estate is the best way to be able to do it. So if you have 35 people that put in $100,000, well, essentially you can buy an $11 million apartment complex that produces close to $400,000 a year cash flow. And you as a general partner can get a piece of that by being able to put it together. So um, it's not scary. It's a different strategy. The second person I would highly recommend is Joe Fairless. Yep. He wrote a highly detailed book called, um, I think it's the best ever, apartment syndication book it's oh. on Amazon it's like a Bible it's thick um, it's a it's a it's, it's quite a read um, but you will learn everything you know between those two books They're about raising capital and understanding the process of apartment syndication that you'll be well versed enough to give you the confidence to go into the market and start looking at deals that's that's really good and you guys are going to be inspired by hearing Corey Peterson's story and if you want to look him up on Amazon or Google him I think it's Kahuna investments yeah um, but his Corey is c-o-r-e-y and uh, but raising private money may sound intimidating to you, but it's really not that hard. And if you've got a good deal and you've got just if you understand the this, the skill and art and science of the flap your lips method, it's really that easy. It's not that hard. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's coming in. No, I said people people want to be part of something. They want to yeah. be part. Yeah, they want to be included in part of something. So you've also got Max Maxwell. I had him on my podcast yesterday. Really? Yeah, super cool guy. He's hard to get on a podcast. Is, have you had him on yours? Um, well, actually, I'm I'm, I'm going to be interviewing him tomorrow. I was supposed to interview him yesterday, but then he said he was booked with some other guy. Uh -huh. Aha! <laughs> uh, Max is a cool guy. Like normally, my videos on Facebook when I do a podcast like this get a few hundred, maybe a thousand. Um, his is already over 3000 in less than 24 hours. It's yeah. insane. Yeah, uh, it's good guy. You've also got to, oh, what he's going to be talking about. Um, he influence. says here, he's going to be talking about influence. So uh, essentially yeah. what he's going to be talking about is how to, I mean, he's, he's done better than I believe all of us 
is creating a massive influence. Oh, yeah. What can you do with influence? Well, guess what? You can raise capital. Yeah. Right? What can you do with influence? You can get deals all across the entire country. What can you do with influence? You can put a room, a thousand people in a room for a conference, right? That's what you can do with influence. And he's probably the best at it. That's good. You guys are asking some good questions here. We'll get to them in a minute. Keep the questions coming. Scott Oots. I've had him on my podcast recently. Great dude. Cool guy. Doing deals in a very difficult market in California. What's he going to be talking about? Um, he's going to be talking about um, the process of scaling and hiring a team. That hundred, that 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 to go that that process of of hiring the right people, training the right people, the meetings and stuff like that. That process of building to hundred thousand a month. Now I met Scott Oots. He did three deals when I first met him, yeah. um, and they were all losing fix and flips. So basically, they were fix and flip properties. He was all losing money on. Um, and, but he had a business sense, him and Jessica, they came to my yeah. office, sat at this table right here and, uh, we kind of went through, we got him started. He understood the process, showed him the whole business and he launched a Google AdWords campaign in Southern California and within 12 months did over a million dollars in revenue. And then now he's taken it, you know, even beyond. Really cool story. You're going to love listening to him. You got Alex Youngblood. Of course we know Alex. Alex is a good dude. Um, you guys still doing fair offer? Yeah. Yeah. We still nice. have yeah, I, I mean, it's still, it's still out there. I still use it. It's part of our, I mean, part of our offer and stuff. So I, he, he's going to be talking about virtual wholesaling, I imagine, right? Yeah, he's going to be talking about, yep, that virtual wholesaling, money, have a fair offer, branding. Excellent. Um, Alex is a good dude out of Virginia. Um, James Hawk. I don't know if I know James. James, I met James in our um, masterminds, and uh, James is a great dude. He is... Um, um, basically runs a hundred thousand dollar plus a month business out of Jacksonville, but he has definitely a, a, a unique way. He's the one that brought me REI automator. So the process, um, of this, what, you know, what we do is what's called this omni channel marketing and we call it omni channel marketing with, and it's with a, um, a collection method mentality. So when you tie those two together, um, you're able to get more deals with less leads. Um, and uh, so you put those, so basically that's what he's going to cover that process. I'm going to cover that process. We're going to show people how to do that. For people that don't know, what is REI Automator? REI Automator is uh, essentially our number one tool that we use to analyze deals. Um, we pull information, all the comparable properties. You can learn everything about a property from the mortgage, the interest rate, what the loan amount was, current value of the property, what the offer on the property. We pull lists, you get all of our data and lists we pull out of it. Why I pull it out of there, because it's the cheapest in the marketplace, number one. And two, the data comes from American Title and it's dynamically updated. So as soon as it hits the county records, it updates dynamically in REI Automator. And I don't know any other platform out there, including list source or listability that has that type of uh, dynamic update. So yeah, it's, awesome. it's, it's phenomenal. I've looked at it. Carlos Reyes. Carlos Reyes. Yep. Carlos, um, and great dude. He, uh, him and Sal are, 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 have taken literally wholesale, really smart dudes. Smart, some of the smartest guys in the business right now. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really awesome. And, uh, they love to teach and, uh, they literally came to my event. I think back in 2014, he was working a job, got started, got up and going and literally has just taken it to another whole level where they're doing deals all across the entire country. Um, and their whole process of, 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 of closing over the phone, similar to Rafael Vargas on what he does is closing deals over the phone. Um, but, uh, but just literally is taken to the whole, I went to his office here in Phoenix and, and they've got a great team of people that are just, uh, just, uh, killing it. That's awesome. Yep. And, uh, cool. So it's over three days at the Renaissance hotel in Glendale, Arizona. Where the Super Bowl was right. Right next door is yeah. oh, yeah. State where the, yep. Cool. The tickets range from um, well, you get a coupon by using the coupon code extreme, extreme right? Yeah, so you save some money. There's are there still some VIP seats left? Yeah, there's a handful. There's a couple, nice. couple VIP seats left there. So VIP is all I mean, almost full. I think we had too many VIPs. We have like I think we have like 30 VIPs right now. So I think we have can have like maybe five more. I think is on that. Oh, uh, let me just encourage you guys, it's worth every penny. Of that, uh, you get to get the VIP seating and you get a special money day mastermind that we talked about before. 
and you just get to be closer, get hang out with the speakers and stuff like that. It's going to be highly recommended. If you guys are interested, again, go to extremefreedom.com. Extreme, I'm sorry, extremefreedomlive.com. Cool. Yep. All right, we got some questions here. Sure. Uh, thank you, Jake. Appreciate the good words. Pillars of gold. Guys, put in your questions here because this happens every time when I end the podcast. A bunch of questions come in because you know. didn't get them in time. So type them in here. Yeah. Um, Nick says, thanks again for some awesome wisdom and lessons. Nice. Uh, good question here from Harold. What's your recommended book to learning how to raise private money? Yeah, I think uh, Corey uh, Peterson, C-O-R-E-Y Peterson's book, he specifically talks about how he raises capital. I love yeah. the way he does it um, because uh, he definitely has a unique method, different than I've, I've learned from other people. Um, so I get his book on, um, I can't, I think it's, I think it's actually raising our cash flow, but just look up, look up, uh, or go to his website and I think he'll have the uh, book you can buy it or download it or something. So that, that's a, that's a great book. Also to that other book I was talking about from uh, best ever real estate. Sure. He, he has a whole section on raising capital there too. I'm, I've not bought that book. I've never even met Joe Fairless. I'd love to, um, He's a, meet yeah. him Really good book I read once by um, Susan Lazetter Lyons. Does that name ring a bell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Getting Getting the Money, I think is what the book's called. Yeah. That's a really, really good book. Um, and uh, JP Mills, I started this business by listening to your podcast, Sean. Like how many businesses have you started, Sean, with your podcast, do you think? Congratulations. That's awesome, man. I, lo I love hearing that. Started up and started um, Good, good. I know we're breaking up a little bit here. JP Mills, the big kahuna, talking about Corey. You're, you're going to love Corey's story, too. I, I'm excited about him. He's a friend of mine. We're in some similar masterminds. And uh, this guy came from nowhere. I mean, I don't mean that offensively or whatnot, but uh, you'd hear his story of where he grew up from mm -hmm. and uh, the, 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 the troubled, the troubled uh, childhood that he had. Man, he's got an amazing – it'll put tears to your eyes. When yeah. you hear him talk about his story and where he came from. Now let, let me give let me give someone if 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 people right now want to create consistent deals every single week and every single month, what do you do? Right. So that that's a I on Instagram we're on it. We have to ask a lot of people like how do I how do I market? What's the best lead source? What's the best you know lead channel? How do I get leads? How do I get motivated sellers? How do I do that? And that seems like the, the biggest thing for people, whether they're doing two or three deals a month, whether they're doing five to 10 deals a month, or whether they have no deals a month, right? That becomes, even talking to Scott Dudes and talking to some, even Carlos and talking to this, we're talking to say, listen, how can they create more consistent leads on a, on a, on a basis? So I want to give you a couple tips and I, I can't go too far in detail because we do more of that, you know, at the event, I, we show you slides and things and lists, but if you go into REI Automator, you can get a pre-foreclosure list. So you want to hit the distress lists, right? The stress list. So number one, hit you can go to um, you can go to uh, you can go there, but you can get um, the pre-foreclosure list. You can get absentee owners with equity with liens. Liens. You can get property or property tax default, and you can get like the inherited list. Those are all great distress lists you can target, right? So distress list. Now you take that distress list and you send them what's called a street view postcard. Now you can do that with, who do you use? I we use yellow letter mail, it works really well. There's some yellow other, letter HQ. Yellow letter HQ works great. So send them a street view postcard. It's essentially pulling a picture from Google of their house and saying, hey, is this your house? If it is, I wanna buy it. What it does is gets an increased uh, response of curiosity and they're like, wow, and they call. So the response is great. So number one, you get all those distress lists and number one, you send them a postcard, but not just once. We'll get that to in a second. Now you skip trace the list. Inside of ARIA Automator, you can actually skip trace. Once you skip trace the list, it's going to give you landlines. It's going to give you cell phones. It's going to give you email address. Now you're going to take, um, you're going to ringless voicemail them, right? You're going to send them a ringless voicemail. You can do like RVM lead machine if you want to ringless voicemail um, or Scipio or one of the other ones. Um, then you're going to send them a text, a text message, right? And then you're going to cold call them, right? You're going to cold call them. So uh, in text, you can, I, I wouldn't do a bulk text. I wouldn't do that. I, but I would do individual. You can do like yeah. lead Sherpa. Um, you yeah. can do individual out of there. Or you just pick up your cell phone and just start texting away. I mean, that's what we have. Just go ahead and text. So the bottom line is, so now you have essentially the distress list. 
And now you've surrounded the seller by multiple different channels or touch points. They're getting a direct mail piece, they're getting a cold call, they're getting a text, and they're getting an email. And you can use a service like GMAS, gmas.com, yeah. I think it's like 30 bucks, and you can send out bulk emails to these sellers. That so comes from your own personal domain. So it doesn't come with like the unsubscribe link stuff at the bottom. Yeah. So yeah, so now you can have, now you surround your seller with your message. So that's that's called omni-channel marketing. So now the, the next question becomes frequency. How many times do you hit with a, you do a postcard once a month, do you cold call them once a week, do you send a text once uh, every two weeks? Frequency is the next question. So the collection method mentality essentially means that have you ever, I know I have, um, maybe missed a payment on a credit card any time in your life, right? Now, if you ever missed a payment on your credit card and you raise your hand and say, yes, I've missed a payment on my credit card any time in your life, do they call you once a month? Well, they call you more than that. Uh, do they call you once a week? No. If you have ever missed a payment on a credit card, they call you literally every day, three times a day. So the collection method mentality tied in with the omni-channel marketing is your frequency is, guess what? You send them a postcard every week. You call them every single day. You text them every single day. You email them every single day. Use the collection method mentality to go that. So then my question becomes this. If you have two investors and one is going to do essentially omni-channel marketing, or maybe they're not even going to do omni-channel marketing, they're just going to send a postcard out and then they're going to send a text and they're going to send a, you know, maybe a, a cold call. Or maybe they're just doing cold calling or just doing text. And they do it and they do it once or twice a month. And then you have you that's going to do this omni-channel marketing with a connect collection method mentality, and you're going to surround that seller with your message, and you're going to inundate them with your message. Who do you think, right? Who do you think will get the most deals? Oh, the inundator. Yeah, the guy that's literally being there. Because if you look and in, in, in you think of the distress situations, right? You got pre foreclosure, you got you got high equity with liens, you got property tax default. They're recluse. Right, they're hiding. They're 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 like in their hole, right? So the only way you're going to get someone's attention, especially in this day and age when attention, you have to fight for attention with all the different mediums that people are being able to uh, distracted by. That if you can do that right, you do that effectively, you can create that frequency with someone. Then guess what? You're going to get their attention. You're going to get that deal, and you're going to get more deals with with in doing you're going to have to take massive action to be able to do it we call it beast mode action to be able to make it happen but if you do that correctly in a fashion you will get more deals than anybody else now that is a a core um, marketing method of our uh, that that's what we do with all of our distressed list and then we move into non-owner occupants and owner occupants and then our frequency is not going to be as intense when it comes to distress but because we don't want to just blow everybody up. But the bottom line is, and you can't do it financially, it doesn't make sense. But we're going to be able to then move into these other different lists to be able to target to expand our universe and create more leads. So what that will do is if you want to create consistency, predictable revenue, creating this omni-channel marketing with uh, the collection method mentality, what happens is this is you'll get more deals um, with, uh, you know, basically sending four postcards and the rest of it is on you. That's awesome. We did uh, 58 deals in the uh, in Alabama last year, in 2018. Boom. Love that. Um, and uh, we looked at our numbers. Of those 58 deals, 54 of them came from the follow-up. 54. Exactly. So if you think you can do deals just by sending a letter and getting working the leads that come in, it's not going to happen. We, If you were to look at our CRM, you can see note after note after note after note after note of follow-up phone call, text message, and and uh, mainly phone calls. Really, just calling people back all the time. It's oh a, yeah, it's like it's a collection method mentality. It's just like re relentless pursuit of getting to a decision. So, of the thousands of leads that we got, only four of them could we get under contract on that first call. Can you imagine? If you weren't doing the follow-up, we would have only done four deals the entire year. And I, I haven't looked at our numbers in a while here, but the, it's, it's a similar. I mean, the uh, we've got, I think, 12 or 13 properties under contract in the last three, four weeks. But it's all, almost all of them are from the follow-up.
so yeah. important what you just yeah. said. Yeah, I mean, same with us too. It's it's prime. We sit in our Monday morning meetings and we have we have the we have each rep has a certain amount of they have 50 people in their book because that's what they can manage by new coming leads coming in. They're gonna they're gonna basically put um, uh, the leads that are essentially dead off into a, a company a long follow up sequence we have. So they're gonna have 50 people in their book and that's what they can manage effectively and it's all done through through their follow up. They just follow up with that those 50. And guess what? They just start popping. They just start popping left and right. Real quick, um, we're doing some vacant land flips now. And my boys are 15 and 14 and they're helping us. They're just wanting to do it. And uh, what we're doing is we're sending out neutral letters and and uh, vacant land is different. The, the response rates are much, much higher with vacant yep. land, right? Mm -hmm. But we're just saying, hey, call this number, leave a voicemail. And in the voicemail, it says um, there's a reference number on the letter, right? So reference the number. They do that. But my boys take that voicemail we don't even call the seller back. We send them an offer at like 15 cents on the dollar for what it's worth. Right. Right. But even when we send the offer, we follow up with text messages, with voice messages. Hey, we send and you an then, offer. What do you want to do? Right. Yeah. And then we send the contract an offer again with a new deadline 30 days later. We just keep repeating that every single month. Um, and we're contacting them, reaching out to them at least every week with this stuff. And then so, there's so, so many cool going. You know, people, the people are going, man, these guys want my property bad. They're, they're hanging out with their friends, you know, on Friday night yeah. and cocktails going, you wouldn't believe this guy wants my property. He sent me a contract, man. You know, he's yes. like, like, you know, that's how it works. So the deals come from the follow up. Okay. Real quick here. Um, Cause we're wrapping up and, and Sean, you've gone longer than you've said you would. I really, really appreciate it. Jake says, thank you both for all the knowledge. You guys rock. Boom. People can get you. Jason is saying here, flip to freedom. That's right. Sean's main podcast is flip2freedom.com. Been doing it for a long, long time. You can go. Can you get all the archives on your website? Yeah, all the archives. Oh, Actually, I have, you can get all the archives, the iTunes. You can go in there. And I have even my now my first episode is on there. I, I recorded from my car. Did you do that as like a second volume yeah. of podcast? No, I just, it's just all up there. Ah, because I can't, I, my iTunes only goes back to 2018 for me because I do three episodes a week. Um, so oh, I'm, you, I'm, you have a lot more, you have a lot more episodes than I do on there. I mean, you have, okay. a, you have a ton more on there. Than I, I hired a guy who's going to be soon here in the next few weeks, releasing volume one, two, and three for all of my old episodes and putting them on iTunes. That's awesome. That's coming soon. Yeah. You but, can do, uh, yeah. I, I think that's, I think didn't Joe Fairless do that with all his 10,000 episodes. <laughs> rem, hey, listen, this is cool too. For those of you that do podcasts, um, I found this service where you can actually record new bumpers and add them on to all of your old episodes. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to say, hey, you want to go to our Flip to Free, uh, uh, Extreme Freedom 2019, you can add that bumper to all of your old episodes. Anybody listening to those old episodes oh, will that hear one. that ad. And, oh, is it you. through Libsyn? No, it's through a service called Podetize. That's amazing. That's awesome. Podetize. All right. Um, so again, extremefreedomlive.com if you want to go to um, Sean's event coming up here in a... Uh, in a few weeks, the crowd. Oh, you two guys are amazing. Oh my God. Listen to this. What is this? Sean Terry is the best educator in real estate investing. In my opinion, <laughs> I don't know. What Come he, on, Adam. I don't know what he's smoking, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, Thanks, that's hey, awesome. Adam, Adam, I think so much. I appreciate it. I, uh, that's an incredible compliment. And, um, and, uh, I, I, I honestly, I just, um, you know, I, 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 there's nothing better going to an event, meeting people, and you know it too, Joe, is meeting people and, you know, their literally lives have changed, meaning, you know, they get to spend more time with their kids, you know, they get to go out and do things that they never thought possible. They never, their, their confidence is higher. They feel better. Their self-image is better about themselves and who they are as a person and what they've accomplished and allows them to do, you know, whatever they want to do in their life, you know? So, yeah. um, you know, I mean, there, there's nothing more honorable than that, you know, and, and, uh, and, you know, I, I, re I read the book, the go giver way back when, and it says, if, you know, if you, if you pour out of yourself and, and give, you know, what you seek and help people go out and achieve amazing things, it'll, you know, it just comes back. And I've been, you know, blessed you know, by God's grace that, um, things in life and it's been amazing. So. Well, good. You've been a good friend, Sean. I appreciate what you've done to the industry and, and what you've taught. Um, you were the first guy that kind of just gave everything away on the farm. You know, I mean, I remember at the time you were coming out with your book, Flip to Freedom. Uh, you spelled how to do deals from beginning to end. Nobody else was giving that much away. And uh, you set 
the uh, you set the standard pretty high for anybody coming after you with podcasts and books and education. So congratulations. I appreciate I'm it. about your book. Yes, I am too. Where'd it go? Oh, Where's check this book? out. Where's Joe's book? REI Secrets. If you want to get it, go to reisecrets.com. Um, it will be available to, um, it's free, by the way, just pay shipping cool. and handling. Great. And uh, the, um, oh, if you want, yeah, and this picture too is from me at Sean's event. That's his curtains. And it's funny because your face, your big, huge, <laughs> fat face was on here. Yeah, so we had, we had to edit it out. <laughs> well, the, um, yeah, we're going to, we, we changed our background for this, uh, this event. We're doing a new background. Okay. But hey, congratulations. How long did it take you to write? You know what it is? I did. I have a bunch of podcasts called REI in your car where I'm in my podcast. Oh, yeah. I'm in my car and I'm doing my phone thing. You know, do you see that? Like the new phone there. I like so that. I you got my new they, one. You don't. All right. So nice. I just took the best of those, got them transcribed, turned into a, a blog posts and emails. And I put it all together into a, a little book Cool. that uh, people are going to really, really love. Um, and you get, a, you, you get it for free. REISecrets.com. And uh, as we wrap this up, guys, if you go to realestateinvestingmastery.com, you can actually get all the show notes, the transcriptions. We talked about a lot of links and books and stuff like that. If you're driving, uh, you can go to realestateinvestingmastery.com, get the show notes, the transcriptions. It's all there. Just do a search for Sean Terry. And you'll find some previous episodes that I did with Sean um, that you can do and go to the search bar, do a search for Sean Terry, and you'll see the other episodes I recorded with him. Go check out Sean's podcast, Flip to Freedom. Um, check him out on Instagram. He's always on there answering questions. And uh, what's up? This is, well, how do you say it? You say the same thing every time. I have to turn my volume down. Um, Flip to Freedom! <laughs> something like that. Yeah, he said the same like thing that. every time. Guys, <laughs> All right, good. So um DM me. He's like, can you chill on the whole flip through freedom thing? <laughs> yeah, welcome. Nope. So all right. Hey, thanks again, Sean. Appreciate it. Have a good one, man. All right, thank you. God bless. See you guys.